Welcome to this week's ESU8 Wednesday webinar. I'm Molly Ashoff, and I am the e-learning specialist here at ESU8. This week's webinar is an introduction to blended learning. When one thinks of blended learning, many words come to mind, like personalized learning, flipped learning, online instruction, individualized, personalized, time, path, place, pace. In this webinar, I will define blended learning, look at the models of blended learning, and we will watch blended learning in action. Let's begin by defining blended learning. There are several technical definitions, but let's listen to how several Nebraska blended learning leaders define it. Blended learning is choice. Blended learning, if we look at the Christensen Institute, says that we are giving students choice over one of four things, or a variety of those things, but it can be time, place, path, or pace. So we give our students choice, we're giving them some ownership in the different learning that's taking place. Now we're not always giving them choice of all four of those items, sometimes we're going to pick one of those items to give them some choice on. As an example, we might give students choice over the path or the way that they get something done. So we're giving them choice over the path. We're saying you have to complete these objectives, but in which order you can decide. Sometimes we need them to go through prescribed order, so that's not going to work. So sometimes we say, you know what, you get some choice over your pace. We're going to give you some videos, here's some resources, the teacher is going to work with you one on one. And throughout that time, you're going to be going through this series of events. As you do those events, you can take the assessments and build your own path by going in the pace that you need to go. Sometimes you might have to watch a video two or three times for it to completely make sense, for you to answer the questions to show that you mastered the content. Sometimes you're going to buzz right through and you're going to get that choice to be able to move at the pace that you need to work through, even when students in your classroom aren't moving through that pace. So when we look at having choice, we're giving students ownership and we're letting them say that I am going to take my learning to a new level because I have choice in you know, either time, place, path, or pace. Blended learning is just really great teaching. It um, takes what you're already doing in your classroom and you add some um, other components to it possibly the online component, more of the small group or the collaboration, but it's meeting students where they are and moving them forward at their own pace and um, giving them some control of their learning. Blended Learning is a program, an educational program, that blends online learning with face-to-face -face learning. And the idea is that we're giving students some opportunities to control the pace of their learning, path of their learning um, to really allow them to, or allow the teacher to weave together the, the best parts of those two learning mediums to hopefully make sure students are successful. Blended learning is a concept, it's a, it's a thought process. Um, I don't think it's any one uh, physical or digital thing, but it's a different way of thinking. Um, I really think that it's a pedagogical approach to teaching as opposed to uh, any of the tools and, and things like that. The tools definitely help, um, but it really is uh, digging into blending the best of our virtual world with our analog world. Yeah, well, to us in Omaha Westside Community School Districts, personalized learning is really learning about the, the learner themselves. I mean, taking students where they're at, and then uh, what we've developed in Omaha Westside Community Schools that we're really proud of are our five elements of personalized learning. So, so to me, in order to really talk about personalized learning, you need to look at multiple components of those five elements. That would be knowing your students, uh, allowing for voice and choice, 
flexibility within the classroom, and that could be with grouping and also the way the classroom is set up, using data to direct that instruction, and then also the use of integrated technology. And I don't believe that any one of those things alone means that you're personalized learning, but the more of those elements that you're incorporating together, the more likely your chances are that you're personalizing learning. From listening to those leaders, we see that there are many ways to explain what blended learning is. A very simplified thought is mixing face-to-face -face learning with online learning to get blended learning. There are also several models of blended learning or variations of them, but most stem from the models laid out by the Christensen Institute. I will go through those, but know that they are just a base model that you can adjust in order to fit you and your classroom. It's also important to know that you can mix and match or practice many models, and you don't have to blend everything all the time. There is so much flexibility in blended learning that you can customize it to you and your students. So there are four types laid out by the Christensen Institute, the rotation model, the flex model, a la carte model, and enriched model. I will start with the rotation model and talk about some of the different variations that we see here. In a station rotation, a teacher has stations set out for the students and the students have to rotate through all the stations. There is usually a teacher-led station. This allows the teacher to be more one-on-one -on -one with a smaller group of students. There is always an online instruction component. The students may be working individually or in small groups with that. And then there is a lot of times a collaboration or a group work project type of station. In a lab rotation, um, this is usually used when students don't have one-to-one -one access or multiple um, devices or computer access in the regular classroom. So then the teacher has the whole class rotate through the lab at some point to get that online component of blended learning. In a flipped classroom, Teachers usually record themselves um, giving the lecture or giving some part of the content to the students, a demonstration possibly, and then the students can access that home or in the class on their own. Sometimes flipped classroom is used um, interchangeably with blended learning and it's important to remember it's just one component of it. And then individual rotation this would be where each student basically has an individualized learning plan and then they work through some sort of a playlist um, or whatever the teacher uses. In this case this is just a blend space playlist and a student would work through all of these modules that the teacher has put in there for that student based on their assessment and their needs. The flex model, this is the second model in that diagram from the Christensen Institute. And uh, this is in which online learning is the backbone of the student learning. So student move individually on a customized online program. Um, there is a teacher there if they need help or support, but for the most part they get most of it through online. The a la carte model. This is where a student takes entirely online um, class or course and um, they also are in a brick and mortar school or a learning center. So they come to the school and they take their um, classes or their online courses right there at the school. The fourth, 
and last model is the enriched virtual model. Um, this is which students are required to have some face-to-face -face lessons or sessions with the teacher and then they also have coursework um, to do online. This they could do at home um, or they could do in the brick and mortar setting. With the enriched virtual model, um, we see this sometimes happening in our distance learning classrooms where the teacher maybe only meets with the students once or twice a week, but they're required to be at those meeting times, and then the rest of the work is done at the student's pace um, and their time, place, whatever works with the student. Now we're going to watch how station rotation can be used in a blended learning classroom. This rotation is taking place in a grade 4-5 math class in order to support blended learning. We take the best um, facets of a face-to-face -face classroom with a teacher and, and the children, and we take the best uh, facets of an online environment and digital tools and, and kind of merge them together. There are four stations. At the Math with Technology Hub, students are using a virtual geo board to solve a problem and then explain how the app helped them on an online discussion board. Assignments like this have made math this student's favorite subject. I like doing math because there's more to math that we do on this. And we usually only do, before we usually only use the textbook and it's kind of boring, so this is a lot of fun. She submits her work at the end of the rotation on a virtual learning environment, or VLE, that gives her teacher instant access to what she's completed. So I will be able to go on uh, tonight and look and just quickly scan and see how many people um, A, completed it um, and understood it, and B, how many will need more support. So it's, it's almost like a yes, they have it, or no, they don't have it, and that will influence um, my grouping and teaching for the next day. Then there's the Math with Myself station that has students completing problems individually, and the Math with Miss Dale station. So what would the oh, area be? 88. 88? How many agree? Thumbs up if you agree. Thumbs down. Well, let's do the math. So we'll For that 10 to 15 minutes, I have their full attention, their full engagement. And that's the most important time for them to acquire the new concept and what they... And that's also the most important time for me to... Um, assess what they know, what they don't know, so that I can base, you know, future lessons on that too. The final station has students working with a partner. That way students can feed off each other, which is helpful because... You have a buddy that, like, maybe knows a bit more than you, or you know a bit more than your buddy that you're working with. Seeing this kind of collaboration is one of the goals from the Huron-Perth Catholic District School Board's Innovation Project. They're using a virtual learning environment to implement blended learning practices, which supports critical thinking and communication in math class. Rachel Skillen is a grade 9 math teacher who's also taking part in the project. She finds students are more engaged and confident when they're working together. If it's a, a teacher-led lesson, you know, there might be pockets of students that are not understanding, but they don't feel comfortable enough to, you know, ask questions or to really express that they're not understanding. But when they're working together and collaborating, then they feel like they're kind of in it together and they feel more sense of teamwork and that they are working toward a goal together. And, and so I think all of those things help. The students also appreciate the time to talk things out with their peers in small groups. The teacher explains it in, like, more of a, like a teacher way, like it's more professional when your friends kind of know what you like struggle in and stuff so they can explain specific parts to you. And hearing that explanation process can give the educator some insight. And if you minus 9.5 from that, that'd be the wire yeah, yeah, but the wire intercept. So I go around and I listen in on their conversations that they're having and then uh, they have much more opportunity to ask questions of me and you know we have that sort of dialogue or that conversation going back and forth so I get a much better sense of uh, sort of what their thinking is and where their level of understanding is and then it gives me an opportunity to give feedback to them throughout the lessons. In this lesson students have to watch a video that's posted on their news feed in the VLE and then solve a problem that asks them to find a missing variable. 
we got the assignment and then we went into groups, which is good because group work and math go really well together. Students can use whatever resources they want in order to get their answer. The classroom is transformed where there are no walls and kids have access to all of those learning materials and each other in a way where the students' ideas and the students' thinking really becomes the content of the learning. At the end of the class, they present their answers and explain their reasoning. Just before they leave, they also answer one question on the VLE to help the educator gauge what the students took away from the lesson. So it gives me that instant feedback and it gives them the instant feedback as well to know that they understood what they were supposed to be learning or they met the learning goals. And when students leave the class, the VLE allows them to access resources when they need it and encourages further collaboration. Our world now is all technology and it helps us because when we're at home studying for a test, all the stuff is on the internet so we can go and look at it and it, we're interacting with more people in our classroom. It also helps teachers collaborate. Teachers love going into other teachers' classroom to look for ideas. So the idea that you can, you know, do that in an online environment um, without having to leave your own school or your own home, it's, it's, incredibly, it's a, an incredibly rich resource for teachers. But it's not just about using new technology or resources. It's about coming up with a pedagogical approach to meet the diverse needs of all students. We used to come at it where we would just say, here's a great piece of technology, everybody use it because it's awesome. And now I think we're coming at it from a, an aspect where if we give them the reason why we want to use these tools, then we can really achieve uh, true blended learning and, and accomplish those pedagogical goals. The Innovation Project used a blended learning format in order to provide professional development for the teachers taking part. The plan is to make use of the work submitted this year. I think that's going to really deepen our understanding of thinking in mathematics and um, how we can help students make thinking more visible. Stay tuned for my next blended learning webinar on the why of blended learning. Why do blended learning? What are the benefits? And as always, if you have any questions or you need more information, feel free to contact me.